in a nutshell, I'm probably going to end up donating them. Hello everybody, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be discussing the Red Wing Iron Ranger, the strengths and weaknesses, and why I'm thinking I'm probably going to end up donating these this year. It's not as cut and dry as what you think. Let's get right into it. So I've had the boot for about a year and they're definitely broken in and I've definitely had some great times wearing them. So good things about this boot is they're extremely durable and extremely well built. Although unlike a modern work boot, I mentioned before they're not a true work boot, they're more of a really good rugged vintage work boot. They don't have any waterproofing, they don't have any real sort of toe cap protection. They still do have a pretty stiff toe to the point where if you drop a tool, you know, um, a wrench on there, it's going to fare much better than if you were just wearing a pair of Adidas or Vans or just tennis sneakers. The boot is built extremely, extremely well. And you can even see the leather quality is just really good. I have had no issues with durability on these at all. For the amount of times I've worn these, the sole is, seems to be wearing pretty well. It's not wearing too fast. Overall durability, 10 out of 10. The quality of this leather too, this leather is really, you can really shine it up really nice. You can see right now, I kind of left it all scuffed up. I do think I'd like them scuffed up a little bit more. It just kind of fits their aesthetic a little bit better. And it just shows the durability of the leather and the quality of it. This is what you get when you get an American made boot. I could take conditioner and actually polish this up and make it to the point where it actually, you can dress it up pretty well, as, as much as you can dress it up. Again, you do have that toe cap right there. For the most part, this is a very high quality, very durable boot. So with all that quality, you do get a quality leather footbed, which is pretty comfortable. That's probably like the least important or that's the worst part of this boot is that footbed. There's really no comfort for your feet. If you're on your feet a lot, it does mold to your foot and it is pretty comfortable for what it is. It's a shoe that has absolutely no cushioning. It feels like you're walking on a two by four. It's still pretty comfortable for what it is. That leather footbed does mold to your foot. Your foot goes in the same place every time. It does aid in comfort quite a bit. And something that I was worried about, I actually bought these boots. They felt like they were pretty much a little bit big, but about the, they were about a good size, but a little bit big. I purchased shoes that are too big in size before. And what ends up happening is after it stretches out, after a couple of wears, it just feels too sloppy. Not an issue with these. You get that nice locked in feeling around your ankle. The boot ends up being pretty flexible. It just feels like the boot moves with you, but you do feel like you're locked in. A lot of times you either get a super stiff boot and it doesn't move with you, or you get a super flimsy boot, like the Clark's has a boot, for example, almost as if the boot can come flying off your foot at any moment. And this amber harness leather, as you can see, it's just, it's wearing in super nicely. It really does give the appearance of a high quality boot. You do see that, you know, you're paying over $300 for a boot. It looks like it's an expensive boot. You can tell it's made in America if you put it next to some other, put it next to some other boots that have their manufacturing plants outsourced in different areas of the world. You can see that just by looking at the boot. And now for the bad. I mentioned comfort. Comfort is the number one thing as far as the bad things I can think of with this boot. I've had this boot for about a year. It's still not comfortable enough to wear all day walking. Now, is it comfortable to take dog for a walk? Sure. If you got an after a barbecue in the afternoon, sure. You're going to a bar with a couple of your friends or peers or colleagues from work, no problem. If you have high demands like me and you're looking for a boot that you can put on your foot at six in the morning and you can walk to work and you can spend all day at work and then you can get home and then you can go back out again. This is your shoe for all day from six in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. This is going to be killing you by five o'clock. Halfway through that, it's going to be killing you. And again, that is a lot to ask of a shoe. I realize that, but that's just my criteria. I like to have things that I can use in multiple, multiple situations and not just one environment. So while they are great, I would rate them at a six and a half or a seven out of 10 comfort. They're not uncomfortable, but after they're on your feet for five or six hours or after you're on your feet with them for five or six hours, you're going to start to feel that, you know, maybe you should have worn something that has just a little bit more support. The support is decent, but it's that cushion that they lack that causes a lot of discomfort and pain on your foot when you're walking in them for, let's say, more than four miles per day. So another reason why I really considering getting rid of them and donating them to Goodwill would be because two words or two things, minimalism and Allen Edmonds. I've got a bunch of different pairs of Allen Edmonds now. I'm covered as when it comes to dressier work boots like the Higgins Mill. The Higgins Mill is like the Iron Ranger killer. You know, a little bit more expensive, but you can wear it in so many more situations and it's more comfortable. It's kind of like a no-brainer. So as far as that, 
this is kind of like my fifth or sixth boot and they, I always have better options. I've done a bunch of videos on some of the boots. I'll link them around the channel. So with that being said, another thing that I would ding them for, and this isn't necessarily a con, it depends on how you look at it and how cold or warm it is where you get. The boot has no sort of water resistance or weatherproofing or insulation. Now, I live in the Northeast. We have summer, fall, winter, spring. We have the four seasons, so it gets hot in the summer, cold in the winter, and everything else in between in the spring and the fall. I typically don't wear boots in the summer. I wear the desert boots, the chukka boots, the Clarks. You've seen them on the channel before. I pretty much wear those, or I wear sneakers or dress shoes. I don't break out the high ones. In the beginning of the summer, when I'm still gung-ho about boots, I do typically, I was wearing these, but my midsummer, when it gets super hot, I can't be bothered with lacing up a full pair of boots. Sneakers, chukka boots, dress shoes. If you did want to wear boots in the summertime, these would be it because there's no insulation. Your foot's not gonna get much hotter in this than a pair of leather dress shoes or leather boots or anything like that. What that also means is in the fall and winter when you have colder months, wetter months, you're gonna have to wear much thicker socks and you're gonna have to apply waterproofing if you want any kind of real water resistance. If not, I mean, you know, they're gonna keep you dry for about five minutes, but if you wear them in a downpour, again, there's just better options. If you want a boot that is waterproof and warm, which boots my nature should be at least waterproof and warm. The very nature of a boot is to be worn in adverse inclement weather situations in the fall and winter months. The boot fits good. It's very narrow over here. But my feet aren't that wide, not a big deal, but it is pretty bulbous. And while the boot never felt sloppy, it did feel like I had a lot of extra room up here. And again, it's because of that bulbous toe cap. Not a big deal if they were comfortable, but because they're not comfortable and not waterproof and not warm, and there's other options I currently own in this specific room. You can probably see some options, right? Well, those are dress shoes. Again, there's really not, not a big reason for me to hold on to these. And with that being said, I do really like the look and the style and the ruggedness of this boot. I'm finding that more and more, I'm dressing a little bit more refined. I'm wearing more khaki pants, which I don't really wear jeans that much anymore. I still do wear them quite a bit, but I prefer something that I can dress down and up. Something like this, it's a little bit harder to dress up. Yes, you can polish the leather, but you're never gonna get away from this super casual look, which while it does look great, it does make it a bit of a one trick pony. And again, instead of having this boot, if I wanted something a bit more rugged that I can just get messed up and not care about, the Clark Desert boot is both more comfortable and lighter weight. And yeah, it's not warm or not waterproof. Neither is this one, so what's what's really the gain of going this one instead of the Clark Desert boot? At the end of the day, the Desert boot is less than half the price and it's more comfortable from the get-go. And if I want a higher dressier boot in the winter months, I have the Higgins Mill, which just fits better in almost every single situation that I can think of. The only situation where this boot really stands out against the Higgins Mill is if you're hiking or in the wilderness and you really want to have that vintage American workwear look to your outfit, that's fine. Then yeah, absolutely. This is a, this is a much better boot than the Higgins Mill. And the toe cap is nice. I do like toe cap boots, but in my situation, there's almost always, not almost always, there is always another option that's better. And there are options that I already own, which is the reason why I'm considering getting rid of these boots. As far as comfort goes, these are the least comfortable pairs of shoes that I have. I would rather wear my oldest pair of Vans Old Schools all day than these. And that, I think that says a lot because the Vans Old School, well, there's not many, there's not much support in that shoe. At least it has a little bit of cushion and it moves with you. It doesn't fight you. It's not too stiff. My feet feel more tired wearing this boot while I'm wearing it just around the house than wearing something like the Vans Old School, which pretty much is just like a glorified sock. While I am looking to get rid of things and, and pare down my options, getting rid of the least comfortable shoe or boot that I have definitely makes a lot more sense. So who out there should buy this boot? Well, if you like the look and you like this rugged American workwear, then yeah, absolutely feel free to buy this boot. I would keep these boots if I was okay with having a bigger collection of shoes. I would just prefer to have a smaller, more central collection. So I'm pretty much the minority here. A lot of people are really happy with these boots. So take what I'm saying with a grain of salt and realize that my situation is very unique. Also wanted to mention that while I don't find them particularly super comfortable, a lot of people on Reddit and on the internet find them very, very, very comfortable. Again, do your own research. Everyone's experience is different. For me, they're not that comfortable. They're not uncomfortable, but they're just other options that are much better. I sound like a broken record again. Just do your research because a lot of people find them 
super comfortable. You could always drop an insert in these boots. I typically don't like using inserts just because it changes the fit. When I buy a pair of shoes, I like them because the way they fit. And if I have to size up, the shoe becomes too long, it becomes too wide, it just doesn't fit right. I've never had luck dropping an insole in the shoe before, in any shoe. The only time I actually had luck was when I took the insole out and put my own insole in. But now the space is the same. The fit of the shoe doesn't change. That's my experience, but a lot of people have said, you put an insert in this boot, it becomes very comfortable. So once again, keep that in mind. So that about wraps this one up. Thanks so much for watching. This has been my final update, my one year review, the Red Wing Iron Ranger. Thanks so much for watching guys, appreciate it. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Stay safe out there, have a good one, bye.